welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Cassie, also known as Nitticass, and this is my channel where I talk about the projects that I'm making, sometimes a little bit of crochet, books that I'm reading, some stuff about my farm life in Vermont, and a spice of mental health. So go ahead and grab your favorite beverage, maybe a project to work on, and let's get started. I, of course, have my morning Pepsi, which is equivalent to my morning uh, coffee. And um, tidbit, this is actually my second one. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning and I feel like I'm super behind today. Barn chores took a little bit longer than uh, kind of necessary because there was a visitor at the barn, but that's okay. So uh, let's get started. If you are new here, thank you for joining. I saw that I have some new subscribers, so thank you for checking me out and hitting subscribe. If you are a routine follower, thank you for continuing to follow me and support my business. I greatly appreciate it. As you can tell, I have a new setup here. I have been podcasting on my phone and then uploading it to my iPad. That usually takes three or four days and then editing it. I am pretty impatient and kind of sick of waiting for it to upload. So instead, I decided that I would record on my uh, tablet, and it does seem to give you a bigger view, which is kind of nice. I will let you know that I have some creative chaos to this side and some creative chaos to that side. So um, I apologize about that. Please don't judge me. I think most of us crafters do have a little creative chaos, but I typically hide it. So I do have two finished objects today, so that's pretty exciting. One is a pair of socks, a pair of ankle socks. They're really fun to make. I really enjoyed the colors. This is from uh, Hypnotic Yarn, their Yarnable subscription box. This was September's yarn, and I think it's Grow with the Flow. I could be totally wrong. Um, but they think they turned out pretty cute. I've got a shadow wrap heel, which I'm learning. I like how it knits up and how it's super fast to knit, but I'm also learning that with a heel flap and gusset, it's more in line with the back of your sock, and therefore my measurements for my foot are a little more even. Um, but I forget that with the shadow wrap heel, a part of the heel is actually up higher on my heel and I've been making my socks a little too snug. Um, I have one pair that I blew out the toes already, so hopefully next sock I will remember that. I did make a little note, but I'm notorious for making notes and not understanding what I said. I kind of write in weird Cassieism with some, uh, abbreviations that I think I'm going to understand and usually it doesn't work out. I also have another finished object. This pattern is called You Are Entirely a Star Child. It is by Hook Mountain. Oh. Hook Mountain Handmade. It's got a really easy to follow star pattern. I've got it knit in this beautiful yarn called Dragon Egg. It is a yarn by Bumblebee Acres that I got at Rhinebeck last year. And this beautiful blue, I have no idea. It's a pretty sky blue. Um, I don't know where I got it from. It was a scrap in my stash and I had just enough to finish. I actually played a little bit of yarn chicken, which um, is why the yarn motif Kind of stopped and I have a lot of vanilla knitting up here although it does look semi-intentional and I have a hunch that this blue yarn is probably from from fiber stash dye works she is one of my favorite dyers and she's actually about 30 to 40 minutes away from me so that is called you are entirely a star child by hook mountain handmade and I get to count one sock and this hat for the make-along, the DC, DCS Pigskin Make-Along. That stands for Down Cellar Studio, which is a podcast. It's an audio podcast. It's run by Boston Jen. 
She does this every year, kind of follows the football season. And depending on how many yardage that you have knit, you get points. So I'm pretty excited that I finally got a couple of points. My hat counts as well. And I'm finally on the scoreboard. On my notes for this podcast, I had written that I have a vanilla hat for my husband. I do not have it actually at all because I was using this yarn. This yarn is a really nice brown yarn. He likes his hats pretty plain Jane and it's 100% wool, which is a requirement for his hats. However, it's pretty skinny. Um, I would call it a heavy fingering or a sport weight, which I didn't realize. So I cast it on, I cast it on with my available needles, which was a size six. And I don't know if you can tell, but my dog had some fun with this needle. The yarn kept snagging, so that was frustrating. So I'll need another set of needles. At the time, my needles were on. The other hat that I was making now they are free and I can cast it on however I'm gonna need to hold it double to thick enough to make a hat that I typically make this yarn is by Juniper Moon Farm it's Patagonia it's organic 100% merino and it is called Sequoia I also have this wonderful cardigan that I've been working on. I was hoping it'd be ready for like late October, early November. That's maybe not going to happen. My Rhinebeck sweater is taking all of the love. It's got this beautiful eyelet pattern on the back. It's going to look like embers of a fire kind of coming up. And I have made absolutely no progress. In fact, last podcast, I was in the middle of a row and I'm still in the middle of that row. I am using this beautiful yarn. This is called Pennies from Heaven and it's by Little Fox Knits. It's got some really nice pops of green and different colors of blue. And I'm holding it it together with this with this mohair yarn and I do not have the ball band or the colorway and I'm just really loving how they play together I also started the Daisy Fields market tote this is just the bottom I've started making the body of it it is really finicky with this yarn I think it's too thin. It called for bulky weight. It says you can knit it with a, uh, whoops, where did it go? A 3.75 to a 4.5 millimeter needle. I am using a H and it is five millimeters. So I'm kind of frustrated that when I looked at it, I thought it would work really well with this hook size, but I am learning a lot about the construction and I'm trying to decide, and you can see my gauge is kind of funky in time. I'm trying to decide if I want this little bag for like a tiny project or like bringing a book. It's not as big as I want, but I am pretty determined to make this project. I'm thinking maybe I'll knit one in this and then I will knit another one in um, like bulky yarn or something and it is cotton which is part of why I was holding off on it I do not have any cotton yarn if you remember I had started this this was a quite a while ago with acrylic yarn and it was big and it didn't feel nice and then I realized it needed to be made with cotton yarn. This yarn is Ella Ray Denim DK and it is Finest Egyptian Cotton. Candy Apple, it's the colorway Candy Apple Tinting. It's in this really cute bag by Adornit. I bought this quite a while ago. It's got this really nice kind of quilted 
pattern with all the spooky Halloween things. And it's got some, you can't really see it very well, but some scroll with some cursive on the inside. And this super cute black cat on the zipper pull. I'm also still working on my crochet blanket. It is called the Cozy Cozy Stripey Blanket. I'll put the name of it. Um, I'll put the name of the designer down below. I have decided to rip out the crunchy yarn. If you watched either last podcast or the podcast before, I wanted it really stripey, and the yarn that I was using, it looked like the stripes were going to be really big and I didn't want like color blocking. So I started making some strips with different acrylic yarns that I had in my stash since the yarn I was using was also labeled as acrylic. However, the yarn I'm using is really nice and buttery soft. It was a present from my sister and the yarn from my stash is pretty crunchy <laughs> and I didn't enjoy working with it. So I've made absolutely zero progress, but I did frog the crunchy pieces. Another whip that I have, and I believe it's my last whip, is my autumn court sweater. It's in this really cute bag that I got from Rhinebeck. So this is my progress so far. I am working on the body ribbing and let's see where our progress keeper is from our last podcast. So I'm using this cute little margarita glass um, progress keeper that I got from my sister. And this is how much that I have gotten done since last podcast. I am in quite a hurry to finish it. I will be honest, I've put some other projects for the DCS or the Down Cellar Studio Pigskin Party and then reminded myself that this has to be done by Rhinebeck. I have some concerns about the ribbing on the bottom. So currently it's at one and a half inches long and I like the way it looks. The pattern calls for two inches. The neck is about an inch. So I'm trying to figure out if that can be the ribbing. I'm trying to decide and I've asked a couple friends in the Love and Stitches membership, you know, does it really matter and does it look okay? So hopefully I'll have a decision soon so I can cast off the ribbing. And then I will start the sleeves. I'm pretty excited. I think I might knit the sleeves in tandem. I think that will kind of prevent my sleeve island and make it feel a little bit faster. The yarn that I'm using is this really nice red yarn. It's called Northern Carnal and it is by O Wool. Then I've got this really nice blue. This is called Serial Mermaid by Dragon Horde Designs. It is a colorway that I got several years ago. This peachy color is also by O Wool and I do not have the colorway band. And then this really cool orange is called Slutty Pumpkin. And I got that also from Dragon Horde Yarn. And then in this bag from Knitwit Yarn Shop from Portland, Maine has all these Halloween themed and fall themed yarns. Except I don't, I don't know if I put that there on purpose but this is Bumblebee Acres. This is on their Coquette Sock Base, which is uh, 75 Superwash Corydale and 25% Nylon, and it is called Red Rum. And the last yarn in here, I caked it a long time ago, which is why it's kind of messy and fluffy, 
is by Desert Vista Dye Works. This is the colorway Labyrinth. It is a self-striping yarn, and I'm really tempted to cast on a pair of socks with this. I love sock knitting and hat knitting for any kind of sports game that I'm watching for my children. It's just kind of mindless. I can get progress done and still really watch them. So it is in the middle of soccer season. I will probably cast this on today or tomorrow. And that is for the crazy, yeah, crazy spooky make along hosted by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. She is having a make along until October 31st. And it's basically knitting anything Halloween themed or fall themed and um, kind of spicing it up with some Halloween or fall themed stitch markers and bags. It is a participatory make along, which means you don't have to finish the object to win a prize. That brings me to my SCO, which stands for should have cast on already. I want to make the autumn doodle cow. This is by, oh gosh, Cassie, Jamie Lomax, but I don't know if that's her business name. If I'm wrong and she has a business name besides her name, I will put it down below. And so I want to make the Autumn Doodle Cow. It has all these different motifs that are fall related and you can choose the motifs that you want to do. And it's pretty exciting. So I have decided I want to do fall leaves. I want to do coffee cup. I want to do jack-o'-lanterns. Um, I'm missing something. I think I chose four motifs, but I'll show you the yarn. So this is, please excuse me, my dog got it while I took a shower today, of course. So this is a really nice blue with lots of pops of blue, some speckled, and some pink. I'm going to use that as the sky. With this yarn, that reminds me of autumn and the fall leaves. I think that will look really cute together. I have to look at my notes when I go to do the autumn doodle cow because I'm actually forgetting what colors go with what. But I do know that this colorway, and I believe this is by, actually I have no idea. So this colorway is going to be my little coffee cups. I don't remember what the background's going to be, so please forgive me. Uh, hopefully next podcast I'll have it a bit more together about my autumn doodle cow. I'm also putting these three together for the candy corn, which is the motif that I was forgetting. And I think I'm going to do the black in the background. I think that will look super, super cute. I'm also going to do jack-o'-lanterns. This is going to be obviously the face. And then this is the body of the jack-o'-lantern, and once again, I don't remember what the background's going to be. Please forgive me. I thought I had all my notes together and was ready to podcast, and now I'm realizing that I should have done a little bit more work for my Autumn Doodle Cow, but I'm rolling with it. And then this colorway, which is pretty fun, it's got some tweed in it. This is by Fiber Stash Dye Works and is called Basic Bitch. Basically picking on um, people who get excited for like pumpkin spice and that kind of thing in the fall. This is going to be my main color of the cowl. So it's going to be the top ribbing. It's going to be the bottom ribbing and the top ribbing and probably the pattern pieces where it changes from motif to motif. And I got this in a really cute basket that I have no idea where I got it from. So that brings me to acquisitions. I got this really cute bag, it's really nice autumnal bag by Adora Knits. Oh, she doesn't have her name tag on the handle this time. Hmm. But I do know it's from Adora Knits and I also ordered some cute stitch markers from her. First set is um, some stitch markers for the DCS pigskin party. So it's got some nice fall with knitting needles. 
it's hard to show it's got a nice little beer can of course a football one that says football and whoops football and fall y'all and then this really cute one that looks like leaves oh it's hard to show leaves and an acorn I got these really cute witchy boots also by Adornit. And it came with a bunch of loops with little beads also from Adornit. And the stitch markers came in this really cute bag. And with the witch feet, I got one that says, I put a spell on you. She also sent me um, some freebies. So there's this one. I got more of the rings with the beads on them. And I got an owl, which must be on a project because I can't seem to find it today. I also got some yarn. This is a sock set. This is by Kenya's Yarn. She uh, did a yarn swap with me from the Love and Stitches membership. She sent me some yarn. I sent her some yarn. This is what she sent me. And she actually dyes the yarn. Um, so I'm going to put her shop below. I'm going to put her shop name here and then I'm going to put the link in my show notes so you can go and check her out. So I don't know if she knew I like pink, but this is a gorgeous pink with some purple speckles, not quite speckles, with some purple in it and this really nice purple mini. I can't wait to knit it up. With that yarn, I got two little bags called Knit Notions, a place for things that knitter needs. It's from Stephen and Penelope from Stephen West, and it was a couple bags that she had on hand that she decided to share with me. Hi guys, uh, editing Cassie here. So I also had another swap partner. Her name is Aston and she sent me this really great self-striping yarn. It's got this cute little mini. It's a Knitterly Things Vesper Sock Yarn Club, an exclusive self-striping colorway for July 2023. It's superwash merino, uh, 75 superwash merino, 23 nylon, and 2% stellina, which if you um, can't tell, I love things glittery. And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited with it. She also sent me a little notepad um, that says things I have to do before I knit and also has um, areas where you can check off how much water you drink. It's super cute. It's in a project bag that's in my husband's car right now, which is not here. But I did not want to forget to show the yarn that I got from Aston. So uh, if you're watching Kenya and Aston, thank you very much. In terms of of business I am designing a sock I don't know if I mentioned it yet it is outlander inspired um, it's got some cable work in it I am addicted to working on it however my son borrowed my graph paper for some math homework and hasn't given it back I do my designing on graph paper and then I kind of write sloppy notes on the side so I'm not sure when I'll share that with you I don't know if I'll wait till it's finished, but um, more to come. That brings me to life stuff. So I don't have a whole lot to share. Weston, my youngest, is still playing soccer, still enjoying it, and it's really great to see him play the games. Uh, Wyatt, who is my next youngest, how do you say that? My third kiddo. <laughs> is um, having a really great school year. So he's not a very academic child. Last year he gave me a really hard time about going to school. His report cards and such were not um, the greatest. And this year, I don't know what's up with him, but he goes to school. He's not necessarily excited, but he hasn't given me trouble about going to school. He has a full academic schedule. He is in what he calls the smart classes. 
and um, he's doing his homework and I'm just so, so proud. And my next child, we're, I guess we're kind of going in backward order. His name is Mike. He just signed up for the army, which is uh, equal parts scary and pride, maybe a little more pride, but still scary. And he actually will graduate in December, which is months earlier than his classmates. He's taking an alternative school called Youth Build, and they went all summer long. And so he'll graduate in December. He's not sure if he'll walk with his class. I hope he will, because I really want the um, cap and gown photos, but we will see. And life on the farm, nothing's really happened. Nothing's really changed. Um, the lambs are growing. The rents are obviously a little bit behind the growing curve, but they are growing as well. And yeah, that's about it for farm life. Nothing really exciting. Our leaves are changing. That's pretty exciting. We have a really big tree in our front yard and it's just gorgeous. I love the way it looks when it changes. And we've got some colors on the mountains behind our field. So uh, super gorgeous. If I think about it, I'll put some photos in here. If not, I'll try to do it in my next podcast. Okay, books I'm reading. As you've probably guessed, my Outlander book, book four, really isn't getting a lot of attention. Um, I really need to change that. I really want to know what's going on, but it's such a relaxing book right now that I fall asleep um, while reading it. I've actually fallen asleep while reading it during the day. It's not boring, it's just relaxing. Um, I haven't gotten to a whole lot of exciting parts necessarily. There was a little bit um, and now it's kind of at a calm period which might be part of the reason but um, one day I'll be able to tell you that I've read more. I'm also listening to From Blood and Ash. This has been on my to be read list for years. I believe I had borrowed it from the library and read uh, like a few chapters and then returned it because it was late because while I'm listening to it, like the first four, maybe five chapters were completely like, yep, I've read this before. And now that we're further, I'm like, no, I haven't, I haven't finished it. So that's my theory. I'm pretty, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm a huge fan of young adult and um, that kind of fantasy. So it doesn't surprise me that I'm enjoying it. I finished Stephen King's new book. It's called Holly. Very good book. Um, I just love the character Holly. She's from the Mr. Mercedes trilogy. I loved her in there. I loved all the characters in there actually. Um, so it was really exciting that he was coming out with a book that was all her own. He did mention that there was going to be some goriness and kind of put like a warning I think on Twitter. I don't think it was gory at all. So I mean everyone has their own opinion of what's gory. I didn't think it was gory, but I did read it. It was an enjoyable read. It wasn't necessarily as suspenseful as some of his books are, but it was still a great read. So that brings me to my spice of mental health. And I will actually put a um, like photo here of the quote. It's a quote by Matt Haig. I'll read it now. I'm not sure how I'll, I might just read it now and then put a picture up. So it says, mental health problems don't define you. You, ex you experience them. And I'm kind of paraphrasing. So his example was, you walk in the rain and you feel the rain, but you are not the rain. I will put that up here so that you can kind of absorb it for a minute or two. And that is it for my podcast. So I hope that you can remind yourself to love yourself fill your cup, and have some happy crafting. Bye!